Okay, moving on to the next step of manufacturing of solar cells. So what do we need now? After we have performed the passivation step, we created the silicon nitride layer. Now what we need is the, we need the metal contact pads on both top and bottom of your wafer. Now the top surface, you can also call it the front surface because that is the surface that is exposed to the sunlight. So we need on both sides, we need electrodes. If you remember, on the top surface, we have these um, finger and bus bar like electrodes so as shown in this um, illustration. Hmm. However, on the bottom surface or the, the back surface, rear surface, what we have is a complete film of a metal, typically aluminum. Hmm. Why? Because back side is not exposed to the sunlight, so we can completely cover it with a metal. But on the top surface, we also need to capture a lot of photons, so we want to make sure there is some space. So we want to only make these finger electrodes. So we are going to learn today how we do this. What are the techniques that are used, manufacturing techniques? Okay, so first of all, we do printing or something known as screen printing of the back side of your wafer. We completely print a film. Hmm. Now, screen printing is the technique that we are going to discuss today. So first, anyway, we, dis we uh, print this aluminum paste on the back side of your wafer, dry it up, Turn it around and now we are going to do screen printing also on the top surface. Hmm. Okay. Now, what is our goal? Before we go into the, the fabrication technique, what is our goal? We want to make sure that these electrodes do not offer very high con high resistance themselves. You know, whenever we are making any, um, you know, right now these electrodes or these fingers are more like wires. Let's, let's think about a copper wire. Hmm. When you want to have a copper wire, what do you want? You don't want the wire to heat up too much and you want to minimize the electrical losses. And so you want to minimize the electrical resistance offered by the wire itself, which means how does the electrical resistance increase when you have the when the length of the wire increases or when the thickness of the wire decreases. Hmm. Now, length here is a standard length. What we can control is the thickness. So basically what we need is we do not want very thin film like electrodes because then they will offer a higher electrical resistance. So we want them, if possible, as high as the width. Hmm. Okay, so that is number one. We want to minimize the resist uh, resistance. Hmm. Number two, however, so think about this. If we have higher electrodes, then when there is sunlight falling onto the electrode from a certain angle, you will also have a shadow of these electrodes. Hmm. So we also don't want to make them so high that the shadow blocks the photons. Hmm. So this effect, this loss of photons called by, uh, caused by shadows is known as the shading effect. There are multiple different types of shading effects also. But if you think of it in, in, in a very simplistic way, you want to minimize the shadowing effect. So what do we want now? We want the electrodes to be pretty much of the same thickness as their width. But at the same time, we don't want to have high shadows or, or long time, long durations of shadows. So what we need basically is we want to make the electrodes as narrow as possible so that their height is also not so much. So this is our goal. Now, how do we achieve that? Number one, we use silver inks. Hmm. Silver inks are very common. Silver um, inks are made of silver nanoparticles. Typically, you also have powdered sil silver, not necessarily nano. But nowadays, the inks that you buy are, are mostly made of silver nanoparticles. Silver also have a good electrical conductivity, so it, in general it offers less resistance and also the technology of printing using silver inks is more or less established. So we use silver inks and now we perform the, now we perform what is known as the screen printing. Okay, so what is screen printing? Whenever you think of any printing technique, the first thing that comes to your mind is some ink. Hmm. And what, when, what is the screen, however? So we are not really printing the ink in a serial fashion. What we are doing is we have a big screen. We make, we make a stencil out of it. What is a stencil? When you make certain 
basically pattern on top of your screen you carve out certain pattern hmm. and now you pour the ink on top of it and you press the ink hmm. now this and after that you remove the stencil so what will happen is wherever you had the the gaps then you got the something printed there and the rest of it is not printed now this is a very common technique right you mm, you may be aware that some of the t-shirts that you wear some of the clothes that you wear they are screen printed hmm. there are so many things written onto the t-shirts and so on most of it is is actually fabricated by screen printing technology it's an inexpensive technology it's a batch fabrication technology so screen printing is a very common industrial technique but the challenge here is that we need to do it at a micrometer scale so now for us it becomes a micro fabrication technique hmm. whenever something becomes a micro fabrication technique what is the challenge the challenge is to maintain the tolerances to maintain the error hmm. for example if i print something which is 5 cm hmm. now i can go 1 mm here 1 mm there hmm. that is my tolerance that is the error that is the tolerance is the acceptable error hmm. but if my entire structure is only 1 mm then 1 mm on this side 1 mm on that side will 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 completely destroy it hmm. now think of it when we want to go into the micrometer scale then even if so if my the standard uh, for example the size of these electro the thickness of these electrodes is 50 micrometer so that means we have to have not more than a few few percents of the entire um, line width as our error we want to make sure that it's generally it's less than 10% error hmm. so we need to we need to achieve this kind of precision and that is why my at micro scale things become more complicated we need to have a high resolution micro fabrication technique so how do we do screen printing at that scale what we do is first of all we use these silver rings because they are nanoparticles and they can be distributed very well secondly we also optimize the viscosity of our ink which we'll see later now here in this illustration i've shown how does screen printing work in general hmm. so this um, this sort of screen or this piece that you see is more like a substrate let's say this is your silicon uh, this is your wafer hmm and i have shown it tilted so it looks something like this okay on top of that what do you have now you have this stenciled screen which you can also call a mask when we talk about uh, you know micro scale then we talk we call it a mask generally hmm. so mask is nothing but something let's say you wanted to write iit mundi on top of your wafer so you wherever you have iit mundi that part you should carve out and the rest of it should be solid so you have the mask on top of it now you take so you and then you attach these two things substrate and the mask very well and you have some sort of ink dispenser hmm you dispense the ink and then you press it basically you can do the both of the things in the same uh, using the same uh, uh, whatever is your pressing device pressing and dispensing can be done in the same uh, thing or you can have one dispenser just for the ink and then you can have another uh, another sort of uh, device which you can which can be which can take your ink forward hmm so this is basically the fundamental principle now afterwards you will have something like this hmm when you after when you're done you have iit mundi written on top of your substrate okay so now when you do micro fabrication however how do you write this iit mundi in you know when you have want to have 50 micrometer or smaller dimensions hmm then what you basically do is you use other micro fabrication techniques for example photolithography or soft lithography or there is also something called micro milling bulk micro machining all of these fi fabrication techniques can be used to or the combinations of these techniques can be used to make one standard mask hmm through which you can then print your screen hmm. now some of these fabrication techniques we will learn in our lectures later hmm. okay so as i already mentioned the ink that you use is made of silver in addition to silver it also contains glass frits it's like little balls of glass very small ones which we are going to we we will uh, learn in the le next lecture why do we use the glass frits 
and also of course whenever you have any ink you have an organic carrier or binder material so this is what your ink contains and you prepare your mask and you do the microfabrication to get these finger electrodes on top the optimization parameters in this process of course the ink viscosity because you want to make sure that if if the ink is very thick then it because you already are working in micro domain so if the ink is very thin it will not pass through it will not come out on the other side because of the surface tension so you need to of course uh, optimize the uh, ink viscosity you also need to optimize the distribution of the nanoparticles or whatever particles powder in it hmm otherwise some patches will have more uh, silver and some patches will just have the organic solvent in that case you will you will not get the right conductivity hmm so you need to optimize the mixing of nanoparticles in your ink you also need to make sure that the ink has good adhesion to your substrate otherwise you ink, the moment ink uh, uh, dries up then it will peel off we don't want that hmm we also want to therefore uh, optimize the, the temperature at which the material is being printed because when some anything dries up whenever a thin film dries up then you will have some residual stresses which need to be removed so all of these are the parameters that you need to optimize